Percy. Give those squirrels hell. Called him Percy. Oh. God, Amy, you startled me. Does that mean he's no longer the, the new dog? Whatever. Where's Lauren? She's probably getting dressed. Her new alarm clock works great. Woke me up. Are you sure this is a good idea? Not many seven-year-olds are ready to be in charge of their own schedule. What her idea. Anyway, last night she brushed her teeth, she did her homework, she got into bed, and I didn't have to say a thing. You know, when you were Lauren's age, you wanted to stay up all night to see what you were missing. <laughs> I remember your father and I came back from a party. It's <laughs> late, and you were still awake, begging to stay up. <laughs> I said no, but your dad, <laughs> he not only let you, he made you stay up. I, uh, every time you'd nod off, he'd wake you up. <laughs> You know, I think that's one of those fond memories that should be said out loud. Ah. It must be Jillian and Ned. She's bringing by a new fire insurance policy from Peter. It is now in our best interest for the house to burn down. Hey, Bob, when Lauren comes down, don't hurry her along. I want it to be her responsibility if she's late. All right, fine. But don't ask Jillian if they've heard from Edie. If they've had any news, they'll tell us. Are you awake nights worrying about what I'm going to say? Hi, Jillian. Let me have my boy. Huh? Yes. That new dog has a loud bark. His, his name is Percy. Oh, we can't stay long. Peter put a post-it on all the pages that need initials. Where's Lauren? She's in training to get her own apartment. She'll be down soon. She's just trying to be a little bit more independent. Oh, good. So, Jillian, have you heard anything from Evie? I don't like to talk about it in front of Ned. Right. I'm, I'm so sorry. See? I got up by myself. Lauren, it, it's 8 o'clock. You're supposed to be dressed, teeth brushed, and, and ready to go by now. Uh-oh. Is there anything else you don't want me to say? Request from Miss Feinberg for an OTC on um, on uh, what is the child's name? Uh, the child is unnamed, Your Honor, because the child has not been born yet. So, so, so what are we talking about? Uh, incarcerating Miss Newsom until she delivers her child, and then taking it away from her? That is exactly what we are suggesting, Judge. I hope DCF has a good reason for wanting to put a very pregnant woman in jail, Miss Feinberg. <laughs> Your Honor, Maddie Newsom is a member of a cult. Objection. My client has no religious affiliation. All right, call it what you will. An extremely closed-mouthed, tight-knit group who live communally while cleaving to radical fringe principles. At this time, there's an ongoing criminal investigation into the disappearance and possible death of a child who lived with the group. Objection. It's prejudicial. Uh, relax, Mr. Weir. We're not at trial yet. I'm aware these are only allegations. Just another example of federal forces running amok. Okay. Uh, Mr. Weir, you might want to inform your client that this is a, a state institution, not federal. Possible death of a child? According to neighbors, a two-year-old member of the group suddenly disappeared. Subsequent police investigation discovered an amount of blood in the basement of the house, but no body. Your Honor, this group uh, believes in a kind of rigid Darwinism. To wit, if God deems it fit to take someone, we don't have a right to resist his will. Survival of the fittest? Your Honor, this is an emergency. Ms. Newsom is the subject of an ongoing criminal investigation, and she refuses all medical evaluations to assess the health of her unborn child. I'm asking you to consider the law pertaining to crimes against a fetus. Well, Ms. Dana, as I'm sure you know, the application of that law to the mother is before the Supreme Court right now, so my preference would be to uh, wait and see what they say. The state has no evidence to support the belief that Ms. Newsom would harm the child that she's carrying, and there's no legal precedent to incarcerate a mother on this type of allegation. We would like to resolve this now.
what? I just can't believe you don't like Boonwell. I don't dislike Boonwell. I just say if you've seen Monty Python, you've seen Boonwell. Oh, my God. Oh, deep breaths. You're going to be okay. I'm going to be late. I'm trying to remember I love to go. No, no, come on. See, that's easy. Look, Belle du Jour is playing at Cinema Cities. Let's go tomorrow night. If you don't love it, then you're going to love it. I can't tomorrow night. Have you seen my keys? Yeah, they're on the desk. Are you working tomorrow night? No, I've got this family thing. Boring, you know. You're seeing your family? It's mandatory. I mean, you could go, but why? You know, so we could both be miserable? Well, sure. We're in a relationship. Shared misery is a big part of that. It's my parents' 40th wedding anniversary. Can you imagine their friends sitting around telling some story about a picnic in 66 when my dad lost his swim trunks? Lost swim trunks? I'm not going to sleep until I know what happened. You really don't want to go. I really, really do. Really? Huh. Okay. Good afternoon. Oh, I can't buy anything. We're not selling anything. I'm Maxine Gray. This is my associate, Sadie Bauer, with the Department of uh, Children and Families. May we come in? Why? We just want to talk with you. Oh, this is about the lady across the street with the twins? Actually, um, it's about your household, Miss Collard. My house? You mean my kids? I received some calls. There have been numerous reports of screaming late at night, a horrible screaming. No, we, we just want to be sure that everyone is okay. Better follow me. Come on, kids, you stay here. Mommy, be right back. It's one cup size, barely noticeable. Well, if it's barely noticeable, then why is it necessary? Because she wants it. Oh, well, that's all that counts. He's already bought her the dress for the damn boobs he wants to buy her. All right, all right. Let's just calm down here. Do either one of you have a picture of your daughter? You mean of her boobs? No, just your daughter. This is, um, this is from a year ago. Her hair is longer now. Now... I'm going to set this here. So when you're tempted to go after each other, maybe you'll look at your daughter and realize why we're here. Okay. According to the terms of your divorce, any major decision in Vanessa's life must be made jointly. I'd say breast implants qualify under that heading. So, Miss Holder, won't you tell us calmly why you think this is a bad idea? Oh, my God. It's, it's so obvious. She's 16. You don't get plastic surgery at 16. It's obscene. You got plastic it, surgery. I paid for that. It was liposuction. I was 30. I had just had a baby. I could not get rid of my stomach. Amazing. You mean it just doesn't disappear if you sit on a couch eating Hot Pockets? Okay, enough. Look at the picture. Miss Gray, this is my grandmother. Catherine Barantis. Why is she tied up like this? Don't start nothing, Jackie. Just go on out of it's here. It's all right, Nana. Don't get upset. You have to stay back. Please, understand, Mrs. Gray. I won't let anyone take my Nana away. If we could just have a moment. Could I do something to make you more comfortable? I just need water and a little sunlight. I do well in all climates. Mrs. Barantes, we're here to help you. If you are being mistreated in any way, it's my job to see that stops today. Do you understand? Yes, I understand. Well, first, let's get those wrists. Don't touch me. I won't hurt you. I'll hurt you. Why would you do that? I'm a holly bush. I have thorns all along my leaves. And if you don't know what you're doing, you, you'll get scratched. I even get scratched myself. I scratch everyone. That's why no one can touch me. No one. No one at all. are 
not responsible people. You have to ask yourself, what kind of parents would handle a situation like this? I'm afraid that question is irrelevant. What's happened? They want to take Ned. Explain how they can just show up this way. We're waiting for a trial. Evie and Rondell are in the car. They want to take him away right now. They can't do that. You're right. But I can go to court tomorrow and file an emergency motion asking the court to vacate the adoption decree. Mr. Taft has passed the paternity test. And it's been determined that his parental rights were terminated without his consent and without due process. Miss Gray, I'm familiar with you and your reputation. And you must realize that no judge in the land would deny this father the rights to his child. No judge would do anything without a hearing to determine the best interests of the child. Absolutely. Amy, if this case were in your court... Peter, it's not fair to ask Amy what she would... Fair? You want to talk about what's fair and what's not fair? Look, the, the, the point is not how I would rule. The, this is a process that could go on for years. It, it, it's not the kind of thing that's going to be settled at one trial. There's going to be appeals and, and continuances, and it's a long, hard fight. It, years. But we can win. Well, I, I'd be uh, less than honest if I told you that a judge finding in Ned's best interest would be enough. Look, before Rondell's rights are terminated, it has to be determined that he is unfit to parent. Legally, he may have a strong case. Are you saying that we can't win? We can just delay the inevitable? I didn't say inevitable. Fine, we'll fight. But one day, maybe in two or three years, we'll run out of delays and continuances and appeals. Maybe. And some judge could say to us, I'm sorry for your pain and your child's pain, but in the eyes of the law, your son is not your son and you have to give him up? Oh, my God. Ah. Your clients are the scum of the earth, you know that? Amy. I mean, how can they... How can they treat people this way? They feel they have a right to their son. They do today. Who knows what they'll feel tomorrow? We have to give him up. What? Every day we grow closer. He'll be talking soon, calling us mommy and daddy, and then... Then they'll take him away, and it'll hurt him. His whole world will fall apart. <laughs> We have to do it now, before he knows any better. Jillian, no. Fighting would be for us, Peter. It would make us feel better, but it would be worse for Ned. We love him. We have to do what's best for him. Some jars of food in the back. Those will do for dinner. He likes a little light in his room at night. I usually... Yeah, I usually pat his diaper for a, a minute while he falls asleep. He starts pulling at his ear. Take him to the doctor right away. He does that when he has an ear infection. I put his yellow lizard in the bag. Thank you. I'm really sorry. You're sorry. Come on, let's go. He wakes up early at about 5.30. But if you give him a bottle, he'll sleep for another hour. But don't give him apple juice. It's bad for his teeth. He loves Peekaboo. Oh. My goodness, Jillian, you're up early. 
I never really went to sleep. Neither did I. Would you like some coffee or tea? Well, I'll make it. Jillian, I'm so sorry. That was a brave thing, and I, I don't know we how... We had no choice. I was a pretty good mom, I think. You were exceptionally good. Maxine, what do you think about us becoming a foster family? You and Peter? I was thinking that we could get an older child at first. I figure our mistake was trying to get a baby. Everyone wants a baby. But if you go for an older child, you're pretty safe. Can you help us? Well, I could. Uh, have you talked to Peter about this? I tried, but he just can't discuss it right now. And I understand it. He left for work early today. Has a retirement party for Seth Austin tonight. He's thrown himself into his work, which I understand. But that's just a defense. You know, Jillian, you've been through a terrible thing. And I think you should give yourself some time to heal. Of course. I intend to heal. I mean, we've lost a child. It's difficult. It's terrible. But life goes on. You know that, Maxine. You want to know about Vanessa? I think the reason why she wants to get her boobs done is because she doesn't want her future husband to leave her the way Daryl left me. Oh, come on. I didn't leave you because of your boobs. You always pressured me to have the perfect body. You put that pressure on yourself. The truth is you just don't want Vanessa to be more attractive than you are. That's disgusting. Is that disgusting? She makes fun of Vanessa all the time. Asks her how she keeps a boyish figure. Calls her a carpenter's dream. She knows I'm teasing. She's getting a complex. Come on, man. Have you got a daughter? Yes, I do. All right, so I'm... you'd want to make your daughter happy if you could, wouldn't you? You'd want her to have what other girls have. And at her age, what other girls have shut to have. Shut up! Just shut up! Shut the hell up! You don't want to know what I think, because what I think is in a perfect world, I would send you to packing and put your daughter in a place where people know a child's a gift. A gift! And one you don't even have for long in a little girl? A girl is a special gift. Because I don't know if you picked up on this, but girls have been undervalued in the history of this country. This civilization, for that matter. They have been treated like decorations, objects, second-class citizens. Yes, I have a daughter. And what I pray about day in and day out is how to prove to her that she has every right to stand up and be counted as a human being. And anyone who thinks of her as anything less is not even worth her time. Not even the space they take up on this planet. That's what I think, Mr. and Mrs. Holer, since you asked. A neighbor, concerned about a small child, approximately two years old, had apparently gone missing, questioned one of the occupants of the house. The occupant denied that a child of that description had ever lived in the home. The neighbor called the police. And you were assigned to the case, Detective Sagani? That's correct. When I questioned a number of the occupants of the house, they all denied the existence of the child. So you gave up? I would have, except that the neighbor insisted I look at a video that she had taken that contained the child. I showed the video to the occupants of the house, and they climbed right up. Was Maddie Newsom one of those people? Yes, Your Honor. What happened then? I obtained a warrant to search the premises. And what did you find? With a substance called luminol, we were able to find evidence of blood stains in the basement. That's how we can see blood even after it's been cleaned up. Did you find anything else? Yes, on a cot in a utility room at the far end of the basement, we found a large puddle of dried blood. And what conclusions did you draw? Objection. It calls for speculation. Detective Sagan is a crime scene specialist. He's more than qualified to draw reasonable conclusions from forensic evidence. I'll allow it. I think someone fell down the stairs and hurt themselves badly. I think that they were moved to the cot and left there to bleed to death. Objection. That's not a reasonable inference. That's a leap of faith. Sustained. Did you do a DNA test? Under Schmerber, uh, we couldn't force Miss Newsom to provide a sample. However, old hospital records obtained by the state indicate that Miss Newsom's blood type is consistent with the blood type found at the scene. In other words, Maddie Newsom cannot be ruled out as a suspect. That's correct, Your Honor.
Cervantes is 82 years old and no longer capable of taking care of herself. Her granddaughter, Mrs. Collin, did the best she could because she knew her grandmother hated the idea of a nursing home. Finally, Mrs. Collard was simply overwhelmed. She had no choice. But then Mrs. Barantes informed her she was a holly bush, and none of the homes they could afford would take her. Uh, so she didn't become a holly bush until it became obvious she needed a nursing home. Well, apparently, she was completely human before that. Next scene. A moment, please. I'd like to know what this is. Uh, well, let's see. Uh, staples, staplers, uh, pen, pencil, legal pads. I'm going to have to go with office supplies. What were they doing on your desk? I'm, I'm taking them for Sanctuary House. That's called stealing. No, that's called redistribution. It's all God's work, Sean. I've seen you can't like go. all the weekends and holidays I put in without charging the department. You wouldn't call that stealing, would you, Sean? That's not the point, Maxine. All the times that I covered for you or made up the difference when you were still learning the ropes. I didn't ask you for a portion of your salary, did I? Maxine, I don't mind you taking these things. I do mind you sneaking them. Sneaking? Uh, that wasn't sneaking. Uh, this, this would be um, sneaking. Oh, you know something, Sean? You can... Keep your office supplies. God forbid that this department should lift a hand to help anyone out. It has taken a while, but I have finally come to understand that I can never, ever trust anyone to behave in a way that is fair or, or decent or honorable. Move! Ms. Newsom. Will this be your first child? Yes. And can you explain the police evidence which indicates otherwise? No. Unless... Unless they altered the evidence. And why would they do that? Because the government hates free thinkers and the police work for the government. Does the government also hate the two-year-old child that seems to have vanished into thin air? There was no two-year-old child. Ms. Newsom, are you happy to be having this child? Oh, yes. This baby is the answer to many prayers. And what is your birth plan? We have a midwife who's one of our own. She says the baby's in the right position. She checks me every week. So far, so good? Thank God. But if your baby should be born with a horrible defect or has some other medical difficulty, you wouldn't take him or her to the hospital, would you, Miss Newsom? No. We don't believe in that. Can you explain that to me, Miss Newsom? We believe in God's will. When you have children, you're taking a risk. Everyone knows that. People die all the time, mothers and babies, even when doctors are present. All I'm saying is that I'm willing to accept the will of the divine. God wants his children strong. That's why he created such a beautiful and dangerous world. I want my baby to live. But if God has other plans, then I have enough faith to accept that, too. I would never be interested in defying his will. All right, honey, why don't you hand me those spices? I'll just line them up alphabetically. And then I can put the oil and the condiments on the shelf. Aunt Joanne, will we ever see Ned again? I don't know. I mean, doesn't he have our last name? The minister said it at the christening, Edward Gray. All right, the shelf is finished. My God, Amy, there's so much wasted space in here. It's, it's just not fair. I hate Evie. I think she's the meanest person in the whole entire world. I wish... Sweetie, sweetie, we're all upset and sad about Ned, but um, I don't think Aunt Jillian feels like talking about it right now. So why don't you go upstairs and get ready for bed? I'll be up in a minute, okay? Okay. Jillian, you really don't have to be doing this. Oh, but I want to. Peter's at an office function. I'd just be sitting at home alone. Have you seen my beeper? I'm supposed to be on call. Oh, was that your beeper? I thought it was Maxine's. I put it in her drawer. Her drawer? Yes, I've made a door for everyone in the house, just to keep the counters clear. Yours is right here. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. Hello? This is Judge Gray. 
Oh, I see. Well, yes. Yeah, I'll, I'll be right there. Thank you. Who's that? The police. He's just been picked up for drunk driving. What? Peter? I'm gonna go pick him up right now. Well, I'll go with you. No, he asked for me alone. B besides, I, I need someone to stay here with Lauren. Drunk driving? Jillian, I need you to stay calm. Okay? Okay. I've been married 40 years. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Happy anniversary. Yeah, well, I've been married 40 years, too. Ten of them were happy. Oh, Hugh, you <laughs> fool. Happy anniversary. I'm Vincent. Hi. Oh, uh, Mom, Dad, this is Vincent Gray, a friend of mine. Oh, I'm so pleased to meet you. You know what? I'm going to give you one of my little Chinamen. I thought you weren't making those anymore. Oh, no, no, no. She's still making them. Uh, don't forget to look in the pocket. There's a fortune in there. Like the cookie? And some of them are sort of risky. <laughs> Risqué, Mom. Uh, well, thank you, Mrs. Toby. Oh, no, call me Allison. You know, Carol, I think this one deserves to be upgraded from friend. He's cute. What's wrong with you? Uh, I'm sorry? You're so cute and not taken. Are you gay? Are you broke? Mother, just... I actually am taken. Oh, God, you, there's your boss. What's this wife's name? Oh, excuse us. You! Enjoy yourselves. This is costing me a fortune, and I don't mean the one in the doll's pocket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know what you were thinking. To get behind the wheel of a car. It was a party. Everyone was drinking. You could have called me. I would have picked you up. It's not like I would have been mad. Come on, Jill. These days, the way I load the dishwasher makes you mad. It's a miracle you weren't hurt. My God. I thought my children were old enough that I didn't have to worry about this kind of thing. I think you got the message, Mom. Oh, so now you're defending me? Amy just served me up on a platter. Cops want to let me go, but she insisted that they charge me. I didn't insist. I just didn't interfere. She wanted to teach me a lesson. Well, she was right. Well, for God's sake, what are you people made of stone? I went to a party, tried to forget everything. Don't use Ned as an excuse. What? You drink too much, Peter. You've been drinking too much for years. You have a drinking problem. No. I have a losing my baby problem. Every night it's a scotch, sometimes two. A lot of times you just pass out in front of the TV. I fall asleep, Jillian. I'm tired from working all day. Where's this coming from? I've been worried about your drinking for a long time. And if losing Ned is going to make it worse, then I... I don't know how I'm going to survive. I gotta get out of here. Where are you going? For a walk. It's not illegal to walk drunk, is it? Does it look like I'm having fun? Hello! Woo. I want to thank everyone for being here tonight. It's a very special evening. Even our daughter Carol is here with her new friend Vincent. And now, for the big entertainment of the evening, at least I hope it's big. Will everyone please clear the dance floor? Oh, no. I would like to do a special dance for my husband. I've choreographed a tap dance to a song that has special meaning for both of us. I do hope you enjoy it. Sorry, I won't be wearing the tassels tonight, sweetheart. <laughs> Pussy 
Always something. Work was stressful. We remodeled the house. Then there was the infertility, adoption, fatherhood. I just kept thinking that one day our life would be normal and Peter would stop drinking. Why has this never come up before? Because I was in denial, hoping that it wasn't true, trying to pretend it was just a phase. And when he drinks, he gets very talkative and he repeats stories he's already told me. It's annoying. He also denies that he's an alcoholic, which is a sure sign of a problem. I deny I have a problem. Does that make me a drunk? Maxine, you of all people know what I'm talking about. What is she talking about? Edward had a problem. Daddy? Daddy did not drink too much. Did he? We argued about it from time to time. You did? We argued about a lot of things. You remember the toast he made at our wedding? Was Daddy an alcoholic or not, Mom? It's a simple question. No, it's not. We weren't so quick to label people in those days. There weren't all these isms and, and syndromes. Edward sometimes drank too much and acted silly. But he was never abusive to anyone. He never missed work. It was never anything more than a mild annoyance. Maxine, he was a drunk. I take exception to that, Jillian. Peter is a drunk, too. And we have to do something about it. We have to face facts. Someone has to start telling the truth. Thank God. We're spared the truth. Do you have my China man in your pocket? Just stop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just jealous. I mean, my mom can't do the splits. You know, she's done that my whole life. From the age of one to 18. At all my birthday parties, my graduation party. I remember them all. It was about her. Maybe that's just her way of celebrating. When I got my first period, she threw a welcome to womanhood party. She invited the entire seventh grade, including the boys. She, she performed an ancient mating tap dancing ritual. My friends thought it was delightful. And I, I suppose it's funny from a distance, but she was my mother. The person who was supposed to, to teach me things, to, to comfort me, to put band-aids on my knee, to calm me down when I was overwhelmed. I just lived in this constant state of terror because there was nowhere I could go to feel safe. No matter how crazy the world outside was, the world at home was always crazy. Sorry. I know she's fun. But when you're little, you don't want to be raised by fun. You want to be raised by boring and stable and predictable. Yeah, like my mother. I mean, except for the boring part. <laughs> yeah, like that. So maybe you're even a little jealous of my family. Of course. What did you think? I think you're safe with me. decision to take someone's child should be weighed carefully and not done in haste. In this case, taking the child also means depriving a woman of her freedom. The state feels that uh, the safety of this woman's unborn child is at risk and that trumps all other freedoms. Mr. Weir would have us believe that the safety of the child is the domain of its mother and the philosophies of the group that she lives with, e even though there's, there's no group. And the law is fairly clear on this. Miss Newsom has not been convicted of any crime. I feel my hands tied by the very government Miss Newsom so roundly detests, by the very rule of law that she and her friends despise and flout. 
But sometimes, as was so succinctly put by a greater mind than mine, the law is an ass. Now, I may be overturned on appeal, but given the fact that Ms. Newsom is the subject of an ongoing criminal investigation and that she has refused to submit to the most cursory medical evaluation, and given that my paramount concern is the welfare of the unborn child, I am willing to take my chances with the appellate court. No, no, you have no right! Ms. Newsom, for all I know, you may have left your two-year-old child to bleed to death on a cot in the basement. In my eyes, you have not only relinquished your right to that unborn child you carry, you have relinquished your right to call yourself a civilized human being. Now, I'm taking you into custody and ordering that you be held in a locked hospital ward long enough for your baby to be born safely. Court's adjourned. Mrs. Barantes, do you remember me? I'm Maxine Gray, and this is Sadie Bauer. Don't come any closer. I'll hurt you. Yes, we know that you'll hurt us, and we know and understand that you are a hollybush. Now, your granddaughter has explained to us that you were not fit to be kept in a nursing home. That's because I hurt people. No one can get close to me. That's right. And because you're a hollybush and no one can get close to you, we are forced to remove you from your granddaughter's home. We are going to uh, transplant you to a place where you can't hurt anyone. A nut house. You think I'm crazy. Well, we, um... We don't like to use that word. But that is the word. I don't like to be around crazy people. I'm afraid we don't have a choice. If you weren't a hollybush, then we would have some options. Like what? Well, uh, there are senior centers. They send buses to pick up the senior in question and take them to a daycare center. There you would be with people. Sing songs, play cards, eat meals, that sort of thing. Sounds rather fun, but, um, of course, there aren't any holly bushes present. Would I have to spend the night? No, you could sleep here at your granddaughter's house. I'm not really a, a holly bush. No? It's just a game I play. Well, that changes things, doesn't it? that the parties have attempted mediation and have failed. Uh, yes, Your Honor, my client wants to be a good father, but... That man was rude to us. What man? That man. He said terrible things. He was rude and inappropriate. Uh, Mr. Van Exel, do, do you have anything to say? It's all in my notes. Well, I, I, will, uh, I will review them and... Uh, and consider appropriate action. Now, um, let, let me head off any further discussion by saying that there is no way in hell I'm going to sign off on a 16-year-old girl getting breast implants. Your Honor, if you take everything into account, There's you... nothing to take into account, except for a couple of parents who've clearly lost sight of their responsibility. Now, the girl in question is 16. If she still desires larger breasts in two years, then she has every legal right to obtain them. Meanwhile, I hope she can come to terms with, uh, with what's left of her childhood. I hope her parents can, too. That's all. They weren't wrong. I did lose my temper. Okay. I asked if I had a daughter. Touched a nerve. Bruce, you have nerves? I just one. I apologize. Well, I accept. 
As you know, I um I also lost my temper today. In the Newsom case. Judge Gray, you didn't lose your temper. I didn't? No. It was the wrath of the righteous raining down on the iniquitous. It was someone who was fed up with moral ambiguity, who needed to make a responsible decision. I was proud to stand next to you. Oh. I thought they just pissed me off. Oh, good. You're just in time. For what? Peter is at his first AA meeting tonight because of his DUI. And it's really important that the rest of the family take part. I've gotten us each a schedule for the Al-Anon meetings in our area. That's a 12-step group for family members of alcoholics. Peter is what you would call our qualifier. And in your case, Maxine, you have two qualifiers. Oh, good. Do I get extra points? Please, this is serious. Jillian, what are you doing? Why is it so important for you to turn Peter into an alcoholic? I didn't do that. Uh, as, as I understand it, you are the enabler. Or are we all enablers? I, I get them mixed up with the qualifiers. This isn't funny. You're right, it's not. Peter got one DUI. It was the day after he lost his son. I have never known him to drink excessively. What, what is this really about? Oh, I think we all know what it's really about. No, don't blame this on Ned. All I'm saying is let's give Peter a chance to mess up once in his life. We all have to face reality. Yes, we do. You first. Ned is gone. I know that. No, you don't. Mom. I want to hear you say it. Stop it. I Maxine. want to hear you say that your son is gone. All right. My son is gone. My son is gone. Are you happy? My son is gone. My little boy is gone, Maxine. It's gone. <laughs> Coming up next on TNT's Prime Time in the Daytime, will Amy sacrifice her morals for a promotion? Don't miss Judging Amy, next on TNT.